Hello guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So our topic for today is variables in quantitative research. Okay, so when we say a variable, it is the characteristic of the data set. So it is used to be measured, manipulated, or controlled in doing our research. Okay, so it is any object, event, idea, feeling, time period, or type of category which can be measured according to Kellogg, Dan, and Diet 2008. So variables are needed in research because these are the objects we want to study and examine and evaluate and measure. Okay, so let me discuss the two types of quantitative variables. When we say discrete, it is a variable that has limited number of distinct values. Vale, it is countable. No matter how many students I have, no matter how many buildings Manila have, has, mga ganon. So this can be determined by counting. So here are the examples of discrete variables here. This represents the number of students attending the field trip. Here, in the second example here, this represents the gender. Here is the girl and here is the boy. Okay? So, bale, countable ang two pictures na yan. Countable ang bawat tao dyan. So, when we say continuous, it is a variable that has infinite number of values. It means to say that we can describe this variable by, shall I say, um, decimal, fraction, or whole number. So the value can be determined by measuring. So the example here is the temperature. So as we see that it has a decimal point. How about weight? It doesn't hit the 140 mark exactly. So I can assume that it is 139.9 pounds. So it means to say that we can describe it by decimal fraction or whole number. So bale, infinite siya. Okay, our first type is the ratio variable. Why is it continuous? Because it is described by either a whole number, decimal, or fraction. It is the highest level of measurement. Why? I will explain it to you later. Zero does not exist in describing this variable, which leads it to have an absolute zero. For example, my height is zero. It means to say I have no height. My weight is zero because, um, okay, so my weight is zero. That's why I have no weight. For example, my age is zero. It means to say, I am not born yet. So, bale may meaning ang zero. May meaning ang zero sa pagdi-describe ng variable. So, its examples include the following. Age, height, weight, temperature, and income. When, when we say zero ang temperature natin, ibig sabihin malamig ang ref natin. When we say zero ang income ko, ibig sabihin wala akong kikitain. Okay, when we say interval variable, it is the third level of measurement. So the difference between two variables are meaningful. Its example include the following. Intelligence quotient scores, age gaps, temperature skills, grades, and rating skills. Yun mga yun kasi, nakakompare na natin. Yun ang example ng inter, na, interval variable. Nakakompare na natin yung IQ scores natin from, from last month to this month. Yung IQ ng ibang tao. Ganun din sa age gap, we compare the ages of each people each person. Ganun din sa temperature scales, we compare. So it's a matter of comparison. Okay. So when we say ordinal variables, it is a second level of measurement. It involves ordering and ranking values of variable. So it includes the following. Um, for example, class honor roll. Sino ang first honor dyan? Sino ang second honor dyan? Sino ang third honor dyan? Student letter grade. A, B, C, D. Mga ganun, from pass to fail. Pag sinabing contest ranking, oh, Grand champion, first runner-up, second runner-up. Pag sinabing Likert skill, 5 to 1, from very satisfactory to very unsatisfactory. Sa pag sinabing BMI classification, from morbidly obese to underweight. So may order-order yun mga yun. When we say nominal variable, category lang ang meron niya. Kaya walang number ang kinalaman dyan. Hindi kinalaman si number. There is no quantitative value there. So it includes the following. This include the following, gender. So, anong gender ko? Male. Anong blood type ko? O. Anong religion ko? Catholic. Anong civil status ko? Single. Anong citizenship ko? Filipino. Yun mga yun kasi, walang kinalaman yan sa numbers. So, it involves 
qualitative description. Okay, so ngayon nakikita na natin bakit si ratio ang pinakamataas na level sa measurement. Bakit? Kasi may category siya. May ordering siya. May equal interval siya. Meron siyang true zero. For example, temperature. If zero siya, malamig. Bakit may equal, equal interval siya? Kasi pwede natin i-compare yung si malamig na temperature sa mainit na temperature. We can compare this temperature. When we say ordering, we can order from highest to lowest temperatures. When we say category, we can classify it if it's Fahrenheit, Celsius, or Kelvin. When it comes to interval, the only thing that it doesn't have is the true zero. Okay, when we say ordinal, it doesn't have equal intervals and true zero. So it means to say, that's why it falls into discrete. Pag sinabing discrete, category and ordering lang siya. Si nominal ang pinakamahinang klase kasi category lang ang meron niya. Okay, so here are the types of variables in a casual relationship. Okay, so when we say independent variable, it is, do you know the input process output? When we say independent variable, it is the input. When we say intervening variable, that's the process. When we say dependent variable, that's the output. When we say independent variable, it is the cost variable. It is responsible for the conditions that can bring changes. When we say in the intervening variable, it serves as the link between independent and dependent variable. So, bale, it serves as a bridge between those two variables. Dahil kung walang intervening variable, anong purpose dito sa, anong saisay ng independent at dependent? So, kailangan may intervening variable talaga tayo. Pag sinabing dependent variable, it is also known as the effect variable. Bale, resulta siya. It depends on the gravity of the independent variable. So, yun yung result sa pagmamanipulate na natin sa independent variable. It is the result of the manipulation. Okay? So, when we say intervening variable, it's just like the USB between the cell phone and the, the CPU. Sometimes, siwa, we charge cell phone through our USB cable, right? We usually do that. So, see, intervening variable, it is just like the USB cable. It's just like a cable. When we say extraneous variable, it serves as external factors of the research that can change the magnitude of the relationship between the independent and dependent variable. Maari nga siya out of the blues, based on title, although this can affect the independent variable. Likewise with the dependent variable. It, it, if it fails to be controlled, it is also known as confounding variable. So here are my example, or shall I say one example. Okay, so enhancing students' learning attitudes through the implementation of flipped classroom in school year 2019 to 2020. So what is the independent? The, the independent is a flipped classroom. Why? Because it controls the circumstances. So it can bring changes to the learning attitudes. When we say dependent, the student's learning attitudes. Why? Technically, it is the result of the flip classroom. Kung nag improve sila o hindi. So here are the extraneous variables. Here are just some. Pwede natin sabihin natin pala absent. Pwede natin sabihin age, behaviors, anxieties. Yun yung parang not mentioned in the title. However, it can damage or promote the independent and the dependent variables. When we say intervening the teaching strategies, of course, even though it's a flipped classroom, it still needs teaching strategies such as teaching online, uploading videos. Okay, so do not forget to subscribe my channel or hit the subscribe button and click the bell button. So thank you guys. Happy learning. Goodbye. God bless.